In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to use layer masks. So what is a layer mask? A layer mask is something you put on top of a layer. What it lets you do is it allows you to hide or use as much of that layer as you like. In this example, I'm using a picture of my daughter. Here I'm creating a new layer, and then I'm going to fill that layer in black and put it behind the main picture. Then on the main picture, I'm going to make a duplicate of that layer. Now in the layer tab, click on the bottom right hand corner where it shows layer mask to add a layer mask to that layer. From now on, anytime you edit that layer, make sure the layer mask is selected. To hide part of the image on a layer mask, you're going to paint with black, and then to add it back in, you're going to paint with white. I'm going to start by removing the red from her eyes. What I do is I put the black paint tool on, and I'm going to paint where the red is on the layer mask. It will remove that color itself, those pixels, and it will let the background black image show through. This is where a layer mask comes in really handy. If I actually remove too much of the picture, I can just switch to the white tool and go back over the spot that I took too much out and it'll put it back in. Switching your paintbrush from black to white is really easy. If you have black and white both selected as your forward and background pictures, you can just hit your X key and it will switch you from black to white. Now I'm going to remove the background from the main image. I use my polygonal lasso tool and I'm going to go ahead and come close to the outside edge all around my main picture. Um, once I have the whole thing selected, uh, then I'm going to right click in the middle of the screen and do select inverse. Then I'm going to switch to my black paint tool and make sure the layer mask is selected and use 100% fill and 100% flow. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint over that entire selection. And what it's going to do is it's going to move all of that showing the black background on So I haven't actually removed anything, I've just hidden that part of the layer. Now I'm going to use a small black paintbrush tool on the layer mask, and I'm going to start removing the rest of the background layer and come right up to the edge of my picture. Now remember, if you remove too much, you can always just switch it back to the white color on the paintbrush tool and go back over that spot and it will put those pixels back onto the picture. You haven't removed anything, you've just hidden them on the layer. By using a blurred paintbrush tool, I actually get a um, fading effect on the edge. It's not a hard line. You can actually select it with your polygonal lasso tool, the edge you want, and um, use that as a marker to erase from, but it creates a really hard edge. And I don't really like that hard edge when I'm trying to blend pictures together, so I like just using the regular paintbrush tool with, uh, with a fade on it. You'll see here by using the lasso tool that it actually made a really hard edge and I don't like that at all because when you zoom it out it's really easy for you to tell that it was a hard edge and not a nice blend. Later on I'm going to go back and actually re-add that edge in with a white paintbrush and then come back in and blur it again or remove just the parts I need with the black paintbrush. Changing the size of your brush as you're going will actually help you get either a finer point when you have uh, really quick changes in your outside line, or using a large brush will just save you time because you can cover so much more area with a large brush. Just remember, the larger brush has a larger fade out area, so you'll tend to blend a little bit too much, maybe fade too much, if you use a large brush close to the edge of your picture. A quick way to resize the brush tool you're working with is hit the left or the right brackets. Either one will make it go larger or smaller.
there's two reasons I would create a black layer behind my main image. The first is I needed to remove um, the red in the eyes. And so when I removed the red from the layer mask, um, it was left with either white in the far background or it would be black. I prefer black because you can see it so much better and the center of the eyes are black. Now the other reason is, is that when you're trying to go through the outside edge and you're deleting just enough to get it to blend, if you have white, it's really hard for you to see where the edge is on white, but black is very well defined. So now that I have my layer, my main picture on a layer mask and all of the background removed, now I want to put a background image behind her. So I'm going to put an image between my main picture and my background black image. Once I have the background where I want it at, I'm going to go to another image and I'm going to select wings, fairy wings for this picture. And I'm going to insert a new layer of fairy wings between the background image and the foreground character image. Next I resize the fairy wings to get to the right shape that I want. And then I'm going to create a layer mask of that layer. While I still have that layer selected, I'm going to use my magic wand tool, and I'm going to select all of the black or the dark brown of that image. And then I'm going to switch back over to my layer mask and use the black brush and remove all the background or the black from that image. Now I'm going to go back and get the other side of the wings and do the same process over again. And the main reason for using a layer mask and painting black on it is so that if you do have a mistake or problem, you can go back later on and paint white back over it on that layer mask, and it will put that part of the image back in. Now I need to go to each one of the wings and take out a little bit more of the picture that was left so it doesn't override uh, the background. Now I'm going to use my eyedropper tool and select some of the pink from the wings. Then switch over to my background layer and with a very low um, flow and very low opacity, I'm going to just kind of brush on that color to the background so that the background color mixes with the foreground um, wings and the character. And then after that I'm going to change to black and I'm just going to gray out the back of, at the edges of the picture. The last thing I'm going to do is copy a picture of orchids and paste that in as a new layer. Then I need to reshape it and resize it so it looks like it's a headband going around the forehead of my daughter. Now after I have the size and shape right, I'm going to create a layer mask with it and remove just the parts that I don't want, the hard, dark edges.
After I'm finished with the orchids, I'm going to go back to the front picture, the, the character picture, and I'm just going to do a little bit of gray, because this picture of the orchids is actually on top of the character's picture. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of gray shading underneath where the orchids are to make them look like they're raised off of the skin slightly. Thank you for watching this tutorial on layer masks.